session with um, um, with um, a couple of speakers who will be speaking at the session. The topic of the session is the diverse approach for an aging-friendly um, internet. And our speakers uh, for today is Mr. Wen Sheng Miao, the director of China Institute of Information and Technology on Aging Research Institute, Asia Pacific. And we have Mr. Wang Wai, Robert Wang, the chief operating officer of of Weibo, Chief Executive Officer of Sina Mobile, and we also have uh, Mr. Jian Liu, the CEO of Huzing um, Zhongke International Center. Please forgive me for not pronouncing it well. And the online moderator is my very good friend, Rui Zhang, um, from Internet Society, um, the China chapter. And um, basically, the topic. Um, is going to, it's basically aimed towards um, um, how to empower our aging population um, for them to be able to have equal access um, to the internet and as well as empowering them to um, enjoy um, good health, education, development opportunities, same as the millennia and the younger generation uh, that we have around. So without uh, further ado, I'd like to yield to um, the speaker to start his presentation. OK, thank you. First, please allow me to um, put, my, uh, uh, put my PPT on the screen. OK. Uh, distinguished delegates and guests, thank you for being here today. My name is Robert Wong and I work with Sina Group, a leading internet company in China. I am honored to attend the 2022 United Nations Internet Governance Forum at the invitation of the Internet Society of China. Today, I want to share some of China's experiences and achievements in making the internet more friendly to China's senior citizens amid a rapidly aging population. The topic of my speech is lessons from China in building an elder-friendly internet environment to cope with an aging population globally. Last month, the United Nations published its World Population Prospects 2022. The report predicts that the world's population will reach 8 billion by 2022, of which more than 10% are seniors aged 65 or above. The report further states that the share of seniors aged over 65 will grow to account for more than 16% by year 2050, and the average life expectancy will reach 77.2 by year 2050. The increase in life expectancy coupled with the decrease in birth weight will further accelerate population aging. Dealing with the aging population has become one of the major challenges of the 21st century for countries all over the world, and it will pose serious challenges to the world economy and social development. But an aging population is the natural result of a country's social and economic development, and it's a natural trend for the development of the human society. As we pursue relentlessly technical innovations in the internet age, the elderly with declining senses cannot fully enjoy the benefits of those digital innovations. They cannot use the digital technology, including software and services equally in a way that's convenient and safe. That's why it's important for the global society to look for diverse ways to make the internet environment more senior friendly. China is one of the world's most populous countries and also faces the challenge of an aging population. With the fast development of the mobile internet, by the second quarter of year 2022, China's internet users have exceeded 1 billion, accounting for, 70, uh, accounting for 74% of its total population. Many of the internet users in China are senior citizens. They are willing to try out internet-based services and enjoy the fun of mobile internet. 
just like the younger generations. However, however, as our digital services grow more intelligent and complex, many old users are unable to enjoy the convenience brought by digital technology. The Chinese government has taken measures to address this problem since 2020. It has advocate, advocated to make information and telecommunication more elderly friendly as part of its national strategy to promote social well-being and national development. It has pro promoted a wider scale upgrade to make smartphones more senior friendly and called for manufacturers to take senior users' needs into consideration. This will make it easier for senior users to use the digital services, help them access information and make it a great global contribution to build an information society on, on the part of China. At the urge of the Chinese government, the China Academy of Information and Communications Technology, also known as CAICT, launched China's Association for Aging Friendliness and Digital Accessibility on May 17th this year. It also published a report titled Development Report on Making Digital Technology More Senior Friendly. Meanwhile, the International Telecommunication Union has made digital technology senior friendly the main theme of this year's World Telecommunication Day. The Internet, the Internet Society of China is working to make online government services more accessible to older and disabled people. The society also launched charity campaigns to make internet service more senior friendly and accessible during this year's Internet Philanthropy Day on May the 25th. Apart from the government's initiatives, China's private sector has also been active in building a senior friendly internet environment. Many of China's top tech, com tech companies, such as Weibo, Alipay, AMAP, Jingdong, Elema, and Tencent have introduced senior-friendly modes in their apps, such as Weibo's senior-friendly version that features bigger fonts and eight maps project to make ride hailings easier for the elderly. Jingdong, Elema, and WeChat have all launched senior-friendly versions of the apps to make it easier for senior users to access news, maps, e-commerce, deliveries, fine tech, and many other services. Now I want to zoom in on Weibo and share some of our takeaways in making the app more friendly to senior users. Not only do we launch new services and promote app upgrades for the senior users, we also encourage them to use Weibo more actively, record their life with Weibo, and share their knowledge and be fully in integrated into the internet society. In September 2021, we launched the Weibo Big Font app, a dedicated application with bigger font size, bigger buttons, and simplified features. We created a support hotline for users older than 60 years to answer their questions on how to use the app. We also launched charity campaigns, fact check campaigns, and privacy awareness campaigns to make our technologies safer and easier for the elderly to use. Before I conclude my speech, I want to share a story that's been very close to my heart. Two of our users, 85-year-old Dong Yunqi and his wife Zhang Fengming, are childhood sweeties who have been married since their college graduation. In their 59 years and counting together, they have traveled thousands of miles and created countless memories. Born long before the modern internet, the pair learned how to use mobile phone after their retirement from the school for the elderly. They've, digit they've digitized their photos and wrote diary entries of more than 100,000 words. In year 2010, Dong became an active Weibo user. For over 10 years, he's been sharing his travel experience and family memories on the Weibo. He said, whenever he opens the app, he feels that 
He's got countless messages to check and endless stories to read. He's got new friends through Weibo and credits Weibo for bringing him a second life. He said Weibo allows him to see the power of sharing on the internet. Many elderly users like Dong have become loyal users on Weibo. We have developed our own strategy to encourage them to be more active on the platform. The elderly Weibo user like to share their lives, engage with younger generations, and find a new interest on the platform. They've, been, they've become part of the world on the internet by sharing their joys and sorrows of life on the digital platform. I have shared with you some of the lessons and achievements from China in dealing with the aging population globally and making the internet environment more senior friendly. At least, at last, I want to call for more internet applications to become more senior friendly. Here, I want to highlight an important principle. Our society should not just serve the basic material, but also the recreational needs for senior citizens. It requires the entire society to care for the elderly, to respect the elderly. I hereby pledge on behalf of Sina Group that we board will double down on our commitment to social responsibility, create more software and services that the elderly can use and help them gain a higher sense of involvement and achievement in the online community. I firmly believe that the age of development will not abandon anyone. The digital world will always have a spot for the elderly. This is the end of my speech. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. We are very grateful for your very um, interesting presentation and um, it was very insightful. Um, I would not know if we have um, the second speaker um, online and if they can um, just signify so we could um, add them to the, um, give them the ability to present. Uh, I'm sorry, he cannot, uh, he cannot assess now, but uh, he gave me his uh, uh, speech script, so I will, I will be uh, uh, talking but instead of uh, to replace him. Uh, okay. Awesome, that's good. So over to you. Thank you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Ray Zhong from the Indonesia South of China. Uh, I am supposed to be the uh, remote uh, moderator, but uh, uh, very unfortunately, uh, the next speaker, uh, Mr. Luo Jian, the CEO of Guo uh, Xinjiang Ke, Information Center, uh, he cannot uh, access to the uh, this room now, so I have to uh, read this uh, slide for him. Uh, his uh, speech title is Ensure Equal Information Rights, Promote an Age-Friendly and Barrier-Free Environmental Construction of the Internet. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, there are three parts of his slides. Uh, the first one is a background introduction. The second one is the, introduce the best practice. And the third one is the look forward to the future. Uh, as you may see in the slides, uh, China is a big country having the world's largest in population, as well as having the most uh, population with difficulty to access information. Uh, which is about 600 million. Uh, and so to promote China's information accessibility is of great significance and it will be an important task to enable uh, or benefit from the information society. 
And, and China uh, has long been uh, attached great importance to promote information accessibility environment. And you can see that China is one of the first group of country joining into the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Person with Disability. And from 2012 to uh, 2016, uh, the China issued a series of related laws, regulations, and the documents. Meanwhile, the information accessibility services of the government sector uh, will be evaluated every year. Uh, the information accessibility work uh, conducted in China was studied later behind nearly 10 years compared with the uh, other developed uh, country or other uh, country doing very well in information accessibility. Uh, China officially launched effort of information accessibility in 2004 and issued the first web accessibility standards in 2008. Due to the late release time, the government and the public service website had completely setting up without using the standards. Therefore, it will be unsuitable to realize the information accessibility in China by using the international comments ways. Different from the traditional way, China have added online uh, auxiliary functions so that the elderly and disabled group who cannot use them can learn from quickly. At present, this is also a unique technology implementation method in China, and we are also exploring how to make this method benefit more country and users. Then I would like to share some Chinese uh, experience with best practice. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Okay. Luo Jian is online. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Luo Jian, could you hear me? Could you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, okay. hear, can you okay. hear me? Okay. You can continue okay. from the page seven. Page seven. Oh. Okay. Will, okay. Thank you. Thank I will you. close yeah. my. Okay. I will close my sharing. Um, just uh, some few minutes. Um, the technical guys will um, give you the rights to share your screen. Uh, Mr. Zhong, can can you share my point? Uh, I could I okay. not uh, how to. Okay, I will because... share the the screen for you. Thank you, thank you. The page is seven. You can continue. Uh, uh, okay. As the page, okay. Uh, this information accessibility accessibility work conducted in China was started later behind, behind nearly 10 years than development country. China officially launched efforts of information accessibility in 2004 and uh, issued the first web accessibility standards in 2008. Due to the late release time, the government and public service websites had completed setting up without using the standards. Therefore, it will be unsuitable to realize the information accessibility in China by using the international common ways. Different from the traditional way, we have added online accelerate functions so that the elderly and the disabled who cannot use them can learn more quickly. At present, this is also a unique technology implementation method in China. And we're also exploring how to make these methods benefit more countries and users. Through more than 10 years of practices, it is drawn the 
concluded that information accessibility environment is one of the key uh, foundation of information society. Information accessibility service is an indispensable part of public service facility, and government is the core driving force to promote a joint effort to forestering and uh, a inclusive society. Firstly, through construct constructing the information accessibility public service platform. Yep. At all levels of government begin to push the accessibility environment development on the past five years, it has been completed construction of 1,000 provinces and their all levels government information accessibility public service platform with the total number of 30,000 government websites. Second, information accessibility environment construction is based on the model of government-led government -led social organization heading and uh, multi-participation. -part Several social organizations or civil societies, such as uh, Internet, uh, Internet Society of China, China Disabled Person Federation, con uh, contribute the joint effort to enabling and the in gov government information accessibility. Uh, please turn, yeah, thank you. Uh, public welfare service through carry out China government information accessibility public welfare action and by free to serve for all level governments. Their websites just need to access to service, the service platform to obtain accessibility services, not only reduce the construction cost, but also help to the unification of standards and services. Here we have a guidance on information accessibility environment, construction service level for the website without information accessibility technology. We could provide guidelines and sharing techniques to help complete or transformation. We will rec re recommend, recommend three standards of service to the community to help them. First, basic service means accessibility service to satisfy w, uh, WCAG 2.0 zero standards. Second, full service will provide mobile accessibility services and online accessibility, get rid of the uh, dependence on accessible software and serving variety group of people. Thirdly, advanced services is to make accessibility websites interconnected with each other to provide convenience and fast speed for user to obtain information. To look ahead of the future, along with the One Belt and One Road program, we are willing to share China's information accessibility technology and experience with our with other countries, exploring the future direction and enhancing cooperation to make the global a uh, village enjoying with inclusive civilized and information sharing services. Thank you. That's all.
Okay, thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. Um, I would want to yield over to Ryu to um, maybe ask a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, due to the due to the different composition of words and language among countries. Many countries that are not spelling words cannot be quickly understood by elderly users and blind users only by screen reader software. So the, the question is directed to who? Which of the speakers? Uh, no, not just ask question. Maybe uh, he just uh, make a comment. Maybe. Oh, okay, wonderful. Uh, so in in that case, um, there are a couple of questions that uh, we would like to ask um, some of the speakers, um, if they do not mind. Uh, this question is um, um, directed to um, Mr. Liu. So, what problems do you think? Um, can be best solved by letting more elderly and disabled people get the latest information, maybe information about their health, information about how um, they can live a better life, um, information about how um, they can connect with their families um, who are not currently with them. Maybe you, you'd like to share some of the insights um, for us. Thank you. Uh, okay, mm, you know, uh, many elderly, elderly people and uh, the disabled people cannot um, get information latest just because um, the country's language and the words is uh, different. And uh, many the disabled people and the elderly people cannot just uh, use the screen readers mm, due to the different composition of words and language among countries is uh, for example the chinese and the english the english maybe just uh, use the letters we also uh, 26 letters we can use uh, the all words but in china in chinese we couldn't use it so uh, uh, our our company and our in and in China we have uh, explored some tech uh, technologies to change to change it. Uh, we use uh, some the new artificial intelligence technology and uh, some web technology to help the elderly and the disabled people uh, who can. Uh, more quickly get the information. That's all. Okay, I will add some information. Mr. Lo just said uh, that maybe the Chinese uh, people, uh, mainly about the elderly group, maybe they are not very familiar with the English spelling in the English uh, the letter. Uh, so maybe they uh, when they uh, brought the visit the website or they are maybe have some difficulty to typing so uh, the company of Luojian they have they uh, developed some uh, software to help um, to help the elderly group to better to read the, the screen or to better uh, to access to the the internet uh, just make uh, to add some information yeah thank you Uh, so one of the key takeaways that I actually took note of um, is um, translation issues and a little bit of some digital inclusion issues um, that might also affect some of the older people. So um, can you share with us, um, um, you, you told us some of the things about um, using artificial intelligence, uh, but then I would like to ask, um, 
um, if you can maybe share with us um, all you know that the traditional screen reading software has been able to m meet some of the standards um, reading needs for the disabled and why we need to add web page auxiliary functions on basic um, screen reader softwares for the elderly. Okay, as a majority of the elderly are difficult to use because they can't use it and dare not use it. However, screen reading software can only spell out the information on the page, which cannot completely solve the problem of interaction and uh, operation of the elderly. Only by reducing their lonely costs and making them master it more efficiently can they reduce their psychology barriers and help them better integrate into the information society. Thank you. Do we have the other speaker uh, maybe wanting to say something? Uh, you know, the... The traditional screen uh, screen reader software this uh, this technology just can uh, read the information on the website page, but more elderly people couldn't use PC and uh, uh, mobile phone technology get information. He, the their difficulties not can uh, uh, not use it um, they dare to um, they can't and uh, they the, uh, and they be scared of the technology so how to uh, shortage the difficulties how to get um, get them to be easily and uh, is the best uh, get the best methods to make them easier okay thank, thank okay, you I, I will add some words uh, for the maybe mr luo luo jian he want to say is for the traditional uh, software to uh, the uh, screen reader uh, the traditional the traditional one is only can realize the uh, spelling or the have to read the information and but but for now, currently at the digital age uh, many uh, the software on the mobile phone the smart devices uh, has many many interactive function so the traditional traditional software could not realize the uh, interactive uh, reader function. But now uh, China has some technology can help the elderly to, uh, to more easily to interact in the mobile uh, devices and uh, to, to, to conduct a more uh, interactive function. So maybe just a point. And for the most important thing is how to educate the elderly and other a uh, person with a disability to to teach them how to uh, use the internet correctly, how to use the uh, smart devices correctly. Um, maybe that's very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so just to quickly wrap up, um, we just have like few questions more for our speakers. So um, we are at the IGF now, and we have lots of multi stakeholders here. So would like to know what kind of. Um, so um, I was just being informed that our time is up, and um, we need to close this session right now. 
Um, so um, we will have to take more of this conversation maybe to mailing list or we take it to um, um, some other communication channels um, that we have. Um, so on that note, um, I would like to thank the speakers and to thank uh, my co-moderator, um, Rui, uh, for bringing me up and uh, bringing me on on to um, join um, um, this conversation. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we will like to say this is a wrap for now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kepler. Thank you, all the staff of DIGF. Thank you, speaker. Thank you all. You're welcome.